Welcome to the Nebraska Arts Council's Fred Simon Gallery. My name is Megan Dion. I am the Public Art and Artist Program Specialist uh, for the Nebraska Arts Council and I manage the gallery. At the Fred Simon Gallery, we feature artists from across Nebraska and we're really excited about our current exhibiting artist, Gabriela Quiroz, and she's here to give us a tour of her exhibition in the Fred Simon Gallery. Hi everyone, my name is Gabriela Quiroz. Um, thank you for featuring me here at the Fred Simon. Um, my show is called Curio. I'm so honored to be here. Um, my work is primarily focused on flora and fauna and seeing something that is discarded but yet seeing the beauty of it still. So for example, I um, piece right here. So I am an uh, artist here in Omaha, Nebraska, born and raised. I primarily work in colored pencil and oil paint. I am very fortunate to also have my studio at the Hot Shops Art Center. If you haven't visited, please do um, if you're here in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, for my work primarily focuses on like the flora and fauna that I find extremely inspirational. Uh, it, it comes across sometimes with people like they'll see something on the ground that's discarded or kind of left behind. Something temporary such as flowers that have been cut or have come off the stem, bones that have been discarded. and I. I just see such beauty in these items and then kind of relating it to the human experience is primarily what my work is in or trying to fe feature, I should say. Um, I'm always trying to kind of connect the viewer with my viewpoint in seeing that and hopefully seeing the beauty kind of that is everyday and around us. So for the show Curio, I wanted to display kind of what I mean by found object. So I have a couple display cases here um, of objects that I have in my studio. Um, and so these are either I have found, people have found for me. Uh, people have now known that if they see a skull, I will take it. Uh, so I am very fortunate in that aspect. So for example, in this case, I have all these uh, wasp nests, paper wasp nests. And I believe I was told that these were skunk and mink skulls. I have a friend who is very good at identifying. And I'll take these and I will set them up in my studio and take a picture of it. And then from there, I will then continue on to my drawing. But it's so wonderful to actually see the item up close because not only can you really study just the colors and the um, imperfections, but then just to see something in real life is just, there's just something about it. And so where I can gather my wasp nest is just like from my parents' backyard. Every summer they have these lanterns that the wasps just make these beautiful intricate nests in. And then in the wintertime, I harvest them. So just simple things like that. And then uh, for bones and uh, insects, and I just come across them actually usually just on walks or wherever I'm kind of looking. If you look around, you'll find lots of interesting things. So this is just one of the displays here at the Curio Show to uh, kind of show you an example. And then, so two of the objects that are here are then in the drawing. So this is a piece of mine called Bella Vita. Um, it is a colored pencil piece uh, featuring peonies, which is one of my favorite flower. I like to challenge myself to try and do as realistic as possible or photorealistic um, drawings. But when you get close to the drawing, they usually always fall apart. And with a lot of different paintings and famous artists, I'm really inspired by that process. So this is on a um, paper. It's actually more between a, a vellum and a mylar called duralar, which really highlights the colored pencil's vibrancy and the pigment. So what my process was, was just to put the flowers down and then take a bunch of pictures. Well, during this, because me and technology do not get along, I did something weird for the lighting effect. I couldn't reproduce it if I tried, but it kind of white, whited out some of the white peonies. And then from there, I was like, okay, well, this would be a really fun image to draw. And then once I had decided on the composition and what I liked, I then put it onto this large, um, piece of duralar and then from there it's just mostly about the shapes and blending 
And from that point, the image comes together. Now, why I chose Beautiful Life is because of the symbolism of the peonies. It's kind of known as King of the Flowers, and it just has a lot of history. Beauty, symbolism, um, it's just this robust, beautiful flower that usually smells wonderful. And I thought that was a really complimentary to like a beautiful life. And so this is the end result. And from there, it just kind of, again, highlights using cause peonies. I was fortunate to be able to preserve these, but it's a very you know limited window in the spring of when these flowers are in bloom and you can get them. Very limited. <laughs> Because as someone who loves these flowers, it makes me sad that it's so small. And so this is just one example of the type of flora that I like to use in my work. Um, so I have a couple pieces that have done similar to this and I have a few ideas for the future. So uh, like the other display, this is a second display I have at the Curio Show. These are actually the peonies that I used, not all of them, but quite a few of them um, for the Bella Vida drawing that I have, another wasp nest from my parents' place, and then again some of the ones that are just real tiny and they preserved so beautifully I think. And it's really cool just to see how the buds are still in shape and um, even though they're not the vibrant colors that they once were, it, it is kind of neat just to see the actual real life item to the drawing. This is my most recent drawing that I have completed. It, it highlights um, the Lenten rose and what is known as lemon stalks. So the Lenten rose has a kind of a special meaning close to my heart to me and also I just adore the symbolism that comes with it. It's one of the first flowers to come up in the spring. It's also known as like the Easter rose. Uh, so once you start to see these flowers, you kind of know that the weather is starting to change. and. For someone like myself, winter is hard. <laughs> I have a very difficult time with it. I know it's necessary, but it's hard. I need my green. Um, so once I start to see these, these are from my parents' garden. My dad has, I think about eight different types. I get very excited and it's just so beautiful like to see all the different types of the types of flowers that he has in this line. Um, and they're all so unique and different and they're so delicate looking. And then so you see them among like the dead leaves and they're just these bright, you know, things to come. So the, um, I think that for the symbolism of, you know, renew, growth, spring, season changing, that's really huge in my work and I try and highlight that as I can, but in like a subtle way. So depending on the flower or the bones or in the object I'm choosing, I try to highlight that. Now for the lemon stalks, um, I used to work at a Thai restaurant and the leaves of these were used for the soups that were made in them. And I'm like, oh, those are so beautiful. Dangerous, but beautiful. And I'm like, so I asked my friend who is one of the chefs there, I'm like, can I take just a bag of those? And so, that inspired, well, what if we combine something super delicate with something that's hearty and that if you touch it wrong, will hurt you. And again, kind of combining these elements to what is very similar, in my opinion, to some of the hardships everybody goes through through life. So this is my piece called The Lovers. Um, so. Unfortunately, these two babies had been hit by cars, but I was able to respectfully take pictures and then properly bury them. Um, but why I chose the lovers kind of again goes back to, you'll see tarot cards with that. And then also to, it's just kind of honoring the symbolism of death, which sounds really morbid, but that also goes back into my culture um, and Latin culture, uh, specifically like Dia de los Muertos. Um, so just honoring the loved ones, the process of death, that it's not this horrible dooming process. Um, in that, so again, it sounds so morbid, but it's not, I promise. <laughs> and 
just kind of highlighting the beauty that can be, especially, you know, to like, you know, honoring your loved ones, honoring what has passed, um, respecting it, and then letting it be. This piece alone was a really big struggle for me to finish. I started it probably about in 2019. I had to put it away, get it out, put it away, get it out. But now looking back on it, that kind of also, I think fits with the symbolism of the piece because sometimes it is hard to let go and then come back. But um, very proud of how it turned out and I'm, I, I hope you enjoy it too and can come and see it. So as far as future projects, I'm going to continue along the lines of the flora fauna symbolism. That will always be one of my niches but I have quite a few works in progress for large paintings and it's been probably since before the pandemic that I was really focused on painting and it's been a really just fun, giddy, getting back into doing large paintings. I've done a few small ones, but I'm talking like 48 by 36 paintings and bigger. And the challenges of creating a composition that is both pleasing yet challenging and then I also am doing a few really large scale drawings. So I'm excited, a little overwhelmed, but that's always a good thing. And then I do have a few smaller um, bones that I have um, ready to go in my studio. So if you ever are in the area, um, Hot Shops Art Center is 1301 Nicholas Street, Omaha, Nebraska. I'm in Studio 203. Again, I'm a full-time artist. I'm there almost every single day and I'd love to see you.